Hello everyone, again, uh, my name is Francisco. I'm a DevOps engineer at Nearform. Uh, I've been working with uh, Protocol Labs in the Elastic uh, IPFS project. Uh, so Nearform, the company that uh, Paolo and I, we work for, we are a remote first company. We have lots of interesting projects. Some of them are in the Web3 ecosystem. And uh, today I want to talk with, with you a little more deep dive about the, the cloud architecture that we have uh, uh, created to do Elastic IPFS to leverage uh, AWS services. So um, you can see here lots of components that are very familiar for uh, in AWS, uh, like Lambdas, uh, a cluster, DynamoDB, a messaging system using SQS and SNS. So um, S3 buckets, of course. And uh, those are all managed by infrastructure as code. So we have Terraform and TerraSpace managing this, uh, all of this ecosystem for us, uh, which, what makes it uh, very easy to like, create new uh, environments. Uh, so it's um, when you want to start this from scratch and uh, put in, in your account and put like dev staging product environment one, two, three, four, you don't care, it's very easy. We have a TerraSpace uh, framework on top of Ter Terraform that helps all of this to be created in just uh, uh, a small set of commands. Um, and um, uh, one thing that was very interesting is that uh, yesterday I talked with some guys here during the conference that they actually cloned the infrastructure repo and were able to, to create everything just reading the docs and, and, and running the comments. I didn't even know they were doing that. So I just found out that was awesome feedback. <laughs> and okay, and we have those logical uh, subsystems, which is the indexing, the publishing, the peer, and they have uh, um, objectives that they are focused on doing, and we're gonna zoom in on, on those. So it all starts at this client up there that sends a message to the indexer queue and that message is just saying, what is the location of the car file that's supposed to be indexed? Uh, this uh, client can be any component, can be any application that has access to send that message to the queue. Uh, the client that we are um, using in the Web3 storage and uh, NFT storage project is the bucket to indexer one, which is just a Lambda that receives uh, an event uh, whenever there is a new car file inside uh, the bucket, and then it just transforms transforms the message from that JSON that AWS gives us of the event for a more simple uh, message that indexer is capable of of uh, comprehending and do what it needs to be done. So uh, in that side here, we have just one single bucket, but uh, the whole uh, Elastic IPFS thing it's agnostic from, from the location where the file actually is. We don't store the car file, we don't store the blocks. We only store uh, positions, coordinates of where things are. So in that side, we could have like multiple other buckets sending stuff for the same uh, SNS topic, or we could have other regions with that same client that send things here uh, from the Elastic point of view, uh, Elastic IPFS point of view, uh, this is not important. Um, okay, so uh, one, one thing that is important though is that even though we don't manage the buckets, uh, once we index the, the files, uh, you cannot delete them or move them anymore, otherwise we miss the link uh, of where the stuff really is. So zooming in the indexing subsystem, so um, the objective is just uh, reading through all of the blocks inside the car file and storing in these DynamoDB tables what are the, uh, the CIDs inside that car file and what is the block position inside it. Uh, so that the peer subsystem can later come and read in this uh, same DynamoDB tables and provide the actual content. So soon as that Lambda uh, is triggered, uh, it starts uh, reading, saving stuff here, and then uh, sending events to both of these um, places. So we have a notification. Uh, we have notification topics for whenever events are emitted from the system. So other external components can uh, just subscribe to do whatever they want. Uh, and we have also a, a queue that is the connection between the indexing subsystem and the publishing subsystem. Um, 
one thing that is interesting here about the elasticity <laughs> is that um, that lambda, uh, we have a, a limit from AWS, which is it can scale up to 999 concurrent um, uh, runs. But we, with the load that we currently have, we are way below that. We run like 15 to uh, 20. So that's pretty uh, fine to be able to handle very well. Um, OK, so the peer uh, subsystem. So now that we already have all of the, 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 the blocks and the positions here, uh, the file is, um, uh, everything is available instantaneously. So soon as the indexing finishes, this means that the peer subsystem is ready to provide the content uh, because they share the same tables. Uh, so indexing writes and peer reads. Um, and uh, the way it works is that um, we have here this AKS autoscaling cluster that has a minimal implementation of the BitSwap peer. And uh, it's capable of doing uh, HTTP byte range requests to the S3 bucket that contains the car file. So now that we know the positions, we can just go ahead and ask for it and just download the, the, the pieces that are important for us. Um, this is going to, whenever the client makes that uh, request, it goes to a load balancer. This is a, a WebSocket connection over uh, libp2p. And uh, well, it, this solves the, the problem of being able to handle a lot of load and scaling um, um, horizontally uh, for like many requests, we just scale up. So when there are less requests, we can just improve our cost efficiency and scale down. And um, from the point of view of the IPFS network, this whole cluster is actually just a single node because uh, they all share the same peer ID and they're all behind um, a DNS that is attached to that uh, load balancer. So yeah, so we can just kill nodes and create nodes uh, according with the, uh, the need. So this makes it uh, elastic. Uh, so the elasticity is based on uh, CPU and memory usage. So more active connections should increase the amount of pods. Uh, in, in this moment, it's being able to handle the load very well without scaling too much. Uh, but it's prepared for whenever there's like a bunch of more um, uh, requests. Uh, the publishing subsystem, I won't talk about it too much because there's a, a specific talk about it in the content routing uh, a track today at 4.30 p.m. that is going to be with Paolo and, and Alan. Um, it's because this piece is like one of the most challenging ones, so it deserved a separate talk. But for now, uh, what you need to understand is that all of this uh, is the piece uh, that actually advertises for the, uh, uh, the other nodes, for the DHT and uh, store the index that uh, we have the block available in, the, in Elastic IPFS. And uh, uh, it has it knows the DNS and the PRD that's supposed to advertise. So the nodes itself that are rolling, that are uh, running inside the cluster, they don't advertise anything to DHT. This is the, the part that is responsible for for doing that. Uh, just sharing some of the challenges we had, uh, some we still have. Uh, the first one is like I said, the the uh, content advertisement is challenging. Uh, the minimal required uh, implementation. So when this project started, we knew like pretty much nothing about IPFS, mm -hmm. and we're able to like read the documentation, especially that guy over there, mm -hmm. awesome guy. <laughs> uh, he was able to read the, the 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 details and understand what was needed and what could be just thrown away, and that become like the minimal implementation of what we needed. And now we see being used in other uh, products as well. So this is very interesting. Uh, so we have millions of, of uh, index blocks being uh, per day, being indexed per day, and uh, we need to handle infrastructure limits from AWS, like uh, the write capacity units and read capacity units from uh, DynamoDB. We had to make some optimizations, like uh, start using uh, batch inserts uh, and like not validating too much stuff, like oh, okay, we already have this block or not. We could just uh, batch insert stuff and make this uh, the indexing speed very uh, better, like super fast. 
and not going to, to those limitations, like we're way below that after some optimizations. And uh, um, we have this read uh, from anywhere strategy that, like I said, the bucket could be anywhere, but that, uh, that is awesome because it decouples the, the clients, the code, and the, uh, the storage itself. But it also comes with new challenges like the egress costs, which is uh, what we've been uh, talking a lot uh, about it. Uh, like if we should just put stuff in, in places where the egress is free, like Cloudflare, or uh, just start migrating things for put it things closer to, to Elastic FS. But well, the idea is to have this decoupled, uh, but a lot of good solutions are starting to show up about this. Um, some trade-offs we had to make. So um, whenever we're handling with infrastructure in AWS, uh, we have like 99 dot lots of nines of availability, but sometimes things fail, so we need to retry. Uh, we have two retry strategies. One is inside the code, and the other one is about the SQS queues. Uh, so usually most of the problems, they are solved in the code. Uh, and we have to decide like, okay, we're indexing. There's a specific block that cannot be inserted into Dynamo because Dynamo just throttled us or just weren't, wasn't available at that time. So what do we do? Uh, we decided to do linear backoff instead of exponential because it's not a good idea to do exponential backoff inside lambdas. That makes them run for way too long and, and it's more uh, uh, costs. And uh, in the SQS queues, whenever uh, we fail, uh, there's like an exception inside the Lambda. The message that started uh, the, the processing of the, the indexer, uh, it will go back to the source and we'll try again. And for that, we need to specify the max receive. So it's the max amount of tries that this Lambda is going to get until it moves a message to a dead letter queue. So we decided to like only try twice and then go to the letter queue and someone does, does some uh, manual action to also avoid expanding too much in like retrying stuff that are not gonna go through like anyways, because most of the infrastructure pro problems they already solved in the code. Um, and the database, uh, we had some discussions like should we use DynamoDB, should we use Redis? Uh, we chose uh, DynamoDB. Uh, because of uh, it's very easy to do multi-region uh, replication of the data. We're still not doing it, but uh, this makes us very prepared for that. And um, and it's been fast. It's been super fast. So we still don't see the need of of changing that part. Uh, and there were the discussion about what container orchestration tools should we use: AKS, ACS, uh, or Lambda. Uh, we ended up with AKS because it's the one that uh, we trusted the most. Uh, at, when we started this, I had like very uh, heard several people that worked with ECS saying that it was bad, it was terrible. But this was actually old experience they had. I started reading uh, uh, close to now like some other uh, benchmarks that it seems like it's been way better. So it might be something that we might change if it makes sense sometime. Uh, and the lambdas uh, is totally out of the of, of the game for the the bit swap here, for example, because of the limitation of the 1999. This is something we want to be able to scale. Uh, we want to be able to control how much that that scale. And uh, just a very quick uh, demo, just 20 seconds of uploading a file in uh, Web3 storage. This is my, my personal account. And I'm already connected uh, in my terminal there with uh, Swarm connect directly with the, the node. This is the DNS for the production. And I'm just getting stuff that is connected there. And is there. So soon as I uploaded it, it was very fast indexed and already available for, for that. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that's it. Hot topic. <laughs> Speed up when you did the new database, 
Right, right, yeah, definitely. Uh, especially when um, handling like big files, it was it was interesting that the average we we made like a, a database change that uh, uh, optimized both uh, like the the batch inserting, but we also changed the the schema for to the club, uh, do a better a better decoupling of the blocks and the card and associating those. Uh, and whenever we we did that. Um, the average duration of the lambda, it kind of, it didn't change so much. It, we were like between like 350 milliseconds to uh, 500 milliseconds, but we had like a, a big deviation whenever it comes like a, a big file that could go like over one minute, sometimes two minutes to to index the, the whole thing. And this is not a reality anymore. So it's, bare, it's even hard to see the difference whenever it's uh, a hard file, uh, a big file or a small file, it all kinds of, it stays in the, in the average, the deviation, it just went way down, like minutes to milliseconds. So it's like some second index time. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're using various, like, uh, it was like, it was a key that was just a multi-cache and then they would have to do a read on write to check how many car files yep. and now it's like a key that includes the car file and the ranges, so, um, whenever you get a car file, you can just do that, right? And it's, there's no read on that to metrics anymore. And then you can just batch and search the whole thing. And just... Yeah, we just keep that validation. We just put everything. We trust that the, the, the offset and the position inside the same car file, they, they got to be the same. So, <laughs> yeah. awesome, guys. Thank you.